My mind drifts back to that Christmas Eve so long ago, when nothing around my home seemed wrong, and nothing in the world outside seemed right. Amy, do put down a sketch pad and hold the decorated Why isn't Beth helping with the garland? Because Beth did most of the decorating before we came home. I'll be glad to help. Just think how pleased Marty will be when he sees it. I finished the class, and that will go too soon. Jill, where have you been all this time? Need you ask? Just look at what she's wearing. Say what you like about my writing hat, but I just quit the closing scene for the witchy curse that was a divine inspiration. Well, we finished trimming the tree with that one. Christmas won't be the same without the records. It's dreadful to be poor. I remember when we used to be rich. I remember too. For better off than so many others, though. Orphans, for instance. We still have father and Marty and each other. It's not fair that some girls have plenty of love like this, while other girls, prettier girls, have nothing at all. Many men from the North and South are missing this year. The army is facing a dreadful winter. Supplies are scarce. Marty's right when we shouldn't buy each other presents. We have to make some, some sacrifices, too. I don't like most sacrifices, but I am tired of remaking these dresses year after year. None of you suffer the way I do. You don't have to go to school with impertinent girls and label your father just because he's poor. If you mean libel, say so. And stop talking about labels as if you pop up a pickle jar. I know what I mean, and you needn't be so careful about it. It's proper to use good words and improve your vocabulary. Vocabulary. <laughs> Christopher Columbus, or we love. John, don't be so boyish. That's why I do it. I hate rude and ladylike girls. And I hate affected little kids. There is one little nasty really. Now, you both are to blame. Amy, your your critics are funny now, but if you aren't careful, you'll grow up to be an effect an affected little goose. And as for you, Joe. Don't be so boyish, and turn up your hair now, and do remember you are a young lady. I ain't, and if turning up my hair makes me one, I'll wear two tails times twenty. I don't want to grow up and be Miss March. I won't wear long gowns and be as prim as a porcelain doll. I just can't get over my disappointment at not being a boy. Look at me. Dimes go fight in the war with Papa, and all I can do is sit at home and knit like some poky old woman. I don't want to, because someday I'll be a famous writer, and I'll make a fortune writing books, and then I'll say and do what I please. And Amy will have dozens of dresses to satin and lace, and Meg will have plenty of handsome bows to dance with, and a beautiful new piano for my bed. I should like that. So let's start our writing and get to work on it. Then play something gruesome for us. <laughs> Amy, I heard a new scene for you. It's wonderful. Oh no! It's very simple, really. All you have to do is shout. Rodrigo! Rodrigo! Save me! Save me! But then faint. Rodrigo! Rodrigo! Save me! Save me! <laughs> I can't do that. I don't want to make myself all black and blue tumbling about the way you do. Besides, I've already designed my costume and throwing myself about like that would crush my gold paper jewelry and crown. You don't have any jewelry, and you certainly don't have a crown. Why not? I am a princess, am I not? Yes, but you don't know it. You think you're a serving girl for Beth, Hagar the Witch. A princess always knows she's a princess. Well, you don't. Now, you're locked in the tower. When suddenly, I, Hugo the Bill, enter, and you cry out to Rodrigo. I thought Meg was gone, Pedro. My father? She is, but you don't know it. I've told you a dozen times, Amy. You haven't the slightest idea who you are until the end of Act 5. Oh, does Meg know? Of course. <coughs> then I want to know, too. Why should I always be the ignorant one? <laughs> Anyways, come on now, Amy, just do the play, and it's not polite to correct the author. Yes, and you're a regular Shakespeare. Oh, it's nothing really. Now, place it up. I am Hugo. I enter with wicked intentions. 
that foolish father of yours doing? <laughs> Waltzing off to war like that, leaving others to take care of his family. Doesn't he realize that he needs fighters to win this war? Not worn out old creatures like himself. We're very proud, Father, and you should be too, Joe. Besides, we don't need anyone to take care of us. Why is he telling to be our tea? Some tea, Aunt Marsh? No. If your father had listened to me, you'd only fought better off today. I begged him not to invest money with that swindler. But your father believes he sees good in every shitless ne'er do well he lays eyes upon. Well, there's no point in dwelling on the past, Auntie. And it was our money that got lost, and it hasn't got anything to do with you. Don't be impertinent with me, Missy. <sighs> You're, you're as pig as your father, Miss Josephine Marsh, and you're as much common sense as a dizzy cow. It's no use talking to the lot of you. Like talking to a flock of geese. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. How are you trying to test my patience now, Miss Josephine? It's just that I'd like to apologize for my outburst, and I'm really diverted how she Amy, where are you going? I want to hear what she's saying to Aunt March. Amy. So, if the position is still open, I'd like to be your personal companion. You certainly are a trial, Miss Josephine March. Still, I suppose the devil you do know is better than the one you don't. You can stop by after the holidays if it suits you. Thank you, Aunt March. You won't be sorry. Merry Christmas, Josephine. Well, it's all settled then. I'm going to watch a new paper there. So, I'll read your books, keep your company, and make pleasant conversation. Pleasant conversation? <laughs> when do we get here? After the holidays. May we open our envelopes, John Martin? All right. A dollar! A dollar! <laughs> How funny. Now I can buy a new book. Maybe the black one. I can get a new one with bonnet with ribbons and lace and a long feather. I'll get a set of favorite drawing pencils and a new sketch pad. And what will you buy, Becky? I would love some new tea, Avery. May we go to the store now, Mark, before it closes? All right, girls. Wait, we'll bring out Father's letter. Yes, I'll go to the Yes.
So Christmas is a time for presents once more. Presents for our morning. We can hardly contain our excitement over the surprise we knew would be our morning in the morning. But our holiday fervor was momentarily surpassed by the preparations for our special performance, the Christmas Eve premiere of The Witch's Curse, an operatic tragedy.
John Burke, back to her. How do you do? How do you do? And how do you do? Been about a year ago. I'm Joe March, and that's Meg, and the other three up the row are Amy, Beth, and Hannah. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you. You know, we've heard all about you. How you ran away from school and tried to join up. I think it's just plumbing. <laughs> you know, I've seen you watching us on the window. Well, I didn't mean to be rude. It's, it's just that it's so dull at grandfather's. <laughs> Those are truly frank. John, come on now. Your home seems so fun and lively. Like a picture when all the lamps are lit and you all gather around your mother. Where's your mom? She, she died in Europe shortly after my father's passing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I give you leave to watch us any time you want. <laughs> Come enjoy the picture if you feel like it. I, I wouldn't. Grandfather would say I was a poet. Fieldwater, Theodore Lawrence, you are officially invited to call the Mark Castle any time you want. Joe, please. Oh, all right, let's go. Well, goodbye then. For now. For now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss March. Josephine. March, what were you thinking talking to strangers like that without being properly introduced? Oh, I don't care. And I bet they don't care either. Besides, you weren't very polite. Your name is pretty and Amy. Honestly, it wouldn't hurt you to say hello. Well, not after the way that man looked at me. What man? You mean Mr. Book? I hadn't noticed. Do you really want to know? 
No, not really. <laughs> it's so dull at grandfather's, and here everything seems so high to me. Well, I'm glad you like it here. Well, I was hoping I could be one of your plays sometime. Would that be all right? Of course! It would be lovely to have someone else play the villain for a change. Mm -hmm. I hate wearing that mustache. It makes me sneeze. And I know how to fence, too. Really? Really? Here. Thank 
with me. And now she keeps to herself and thinks that John is a lovely name and brown eyes are beautiful. Well, I think it's simply sentimental romantic rubbish. You'll feel differently when someone's going to take you away. I'd like to see them try. <laughs>
you do as you please. But remember, the day you marry him is the day I disinherit you. Ooh. Now I, 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 well, you made me forget what I came here for. I washed my hands of you.
Soon, summer was upon us, and sooner still was John and Meg's wedding day. Our lives were so full of preparations and plans for the wedding that we scarcely had time to think of the boy that we left in our little house on the day of Meg's departure. But that day came at last, and with those same feelings of joy and loss that attend the members at most weddings. I 
I want to go away. What? Why, Bill? I, I've been thinking about this for a while, and I need to be out, seeing and doing. I want to hop a little ways and fly my wings. Bill, where are you going to take a hop? New York. Joe, Amy can take care of Aunt March. They're more compatible anyhow. And you and Beth, and I was thinking I could go work at Mrs. Kirk's. She's looking for help with the children, and with so much to see and do, I have lots of new ideas for my story. Joe, dear, be sure that you're running to something, and not away from something or someone. Is it Lori? Oh, Lori! She's got this romantic rubbish in his head. I, I thought it would pass, but it's only gotten worse. But how do you feel about it? I love you dearly as a friend. I think that if I go away for a while, you'll be over it, and things can go back to the way they were. I just know I don't want to make this thing. All right, Joe. I think it would be best for both of you. All right, to Mrs. Kirk, and if Father agrees, you shall go. Thank you, Mom. Now, come along and see Megan John on the honeymoon. All right, Mom. Just as 
unexpected and wonderful as yours. Well assuring, no reproaches and no regrets. You can stop in New York before you sail and see your first name that will help. Yes, that will be a comfort. I need to be selfish, but I'm quite glad Joe isn't traveling so far from us just yet. It's hard enough with her off in New York. Yes, dear, I know. Well, enough conversation for now. We have some preparations to begin. Yep. May I read it? Oh, well, I don't have one hand right now. I can't 
finished it right before I left. Okay. When will it be published? Oh, who knows? I didn't meet with the publisher. I left with the professor there. Oh, you must be very involved. I am. You see, he's the reason I wrote the book. He told me it was time to write about people and places and things I know. He said a bunch of made up people and places I've never seen. Did you? Yes, I did. I did. Well, what's your book about? It's about you, must be. Well, all of us, really. Right here. When I'm going home, and all the happy cry for Mr. Shane. Oh, Joe, it's all right. You don't have to cry. I'm not crying. Not really. I'm just so lonesome. Lonesome for Meg and Amy and all our old times. It's all right, Joe. It's all right. You don't have to be afraid of me. Don't tell anyone, but. No. I haven't wanted to tell anyone but you, my child. But I know I can feel myself slip, slip a little each day when the time's going out. Don't say it, Becky. Please. Doesn't that sound funny? Me telling you. Me, the little cricket by the heart, always content to stay safely at home. While you and Meg and Amy dream of flying away. I suppose it's my turn to fly away first this time. Sorry, Joe. Sorry I can't express myself properly. But I don't think I was ever intended to live for very long because I can never claim what I wanted to do when I grew up because I couldn't bear the thought of leaving home. I'm not afraid, not anymore. Because the love is the only thing we can take with us when we go. And I have so much of it, I don't believe the end is easy. But Joe, I may be homesick for you, even in heaven. Oh, Becky. Nothing parts. No, no, no. I know, Joe. I know. You must be brave for mother and father. Take my place. Help them through this. I will. <coughs> Yes, Bethy. Is it the marriage? 
Nothing in our little home seems wrong, and nothing in the world outside. 